Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. This is Lou Little over here at State Unity Life. Lou, there must be some mistake. Goodbye. What? <laughs> Wait a minute, will you? Well? Don't hang up on me. What do you mean, some mistake? Two solid years I had to wait for an assignment from you. Well, I know, Now, suddenly, I... two calls within two weeks? I don't know if I can stand the shock. Come clean. What's the problem? Problem? My only problem, Johnny, is getting rid of exactly $1,000. Well, how nice. And I suppose you just want to hand it over to me. What else? <laughs> You're kidding. Am I? You got to be. Why did you come over here and see? Sure, why not? Just be ready to pay my cab fare. Sure, why not? Okay. Okay. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. If you ever suffer a touch of arthritis or rheumatism, and you've never tried mentholatum deep heating rub, you can't know how good its deep heating action can make you feel. As you massage it into painful areas, you feel its deep heating action. You know relief is on its way. Mentholatum Deep Heating Rub is an extra strong combination of active ingredients for safe, temporary relief of minor arthritic rheumatic pain. Use greaseless, stainless Mentholatum Deep Heating Rub often. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to State Unity Life Insurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Well of Trouble matter. So maybe Lou Little was just leading me on. Had some real nasty case bothering him, but if it meant a thousand bucks in my kick, and after the one I handled a week ago for him for free... Well, to repeat myself, why not? Expense account item one, a buck twenty for a cab to his office. I'm kidding you one bit, Johnny. Here you are, baby. A perfectly good check for 1,000 clients. Well, a Merry Christmas to you, too. But what's it for, Lou? Why don't you take a look at the signature on it? G. Stanley Porter. That's right. Hmm. Last week's little fracas. After what you did for him, and considering you wouldn't even take expenses for it, well... He insisted that you have this. Well, I thought I made it plain, Lou, that... He insisted. All right. I'm certainly not going to turn down a thousand bucks. He wouldn't have it otherwise. Tell him thanks for me, would you? Be glad to. Hey, uh, what goes around here? Huh? You planning a trip to the gambling halls of Las Vegas or just leaving the country in a hurry? What do you mean? Big stack of dough on your desk. Oh, that. Yeah, what goes, Lou? <laughs> you must have around 5,000 here, all in small bills. Well, pick up the change line, man. You'll find this exactly $2,388.24. I just about to mail out a receipt for it. Receipt? Yeah. Just received it in the mail from an old crackpot by the name of Jeremy R. Withers. What's it for? His insurance premium. What else? In cash? In cash, like always. He simply stuffs it into a plain brown envelope and mails it in. Without even insuring it? It must be a crackpot. Johnny, I've written him half a dozen times, pointing out the risk in sending this much cash in the regular mail. I've even offered to send somebody out to his place to collect it from him. But he'll have none of it. Crazy. Stubborn as that wild old Western character, Durango Laramie Dalhart, huh? Durango what? That's right. You know, believe it or not, he lived in a town called Bumspung, Oklahoma. Oh, no, you're kidding. No, I'm not really, Lou. Old Indian name. Bumspung means Bum bad Bum. spring. Yes, Bumspung. Bad water. But at least Durango had, a, had sense enough to bring in the cash in person. Nearly 4,000 at a crack once a year. I thought maybe you might have heard my report on the case a couple of years ago. Oh, I must have missed it. But at least old Jeremy Withers has company and his eccentricity. Look, if you could meet some of the wacky policyholders I've had to deal with, you'd think nothing at all of Withers. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> what are you chuckling about? I oh, old Durango. Boy, he gave us quite a scare that one time. How do you mean? Well, he brought in a stack like this one day, you know. And, brother, you should have seen them. One look and you'd have sworn they were counterfeit. But they weren't? Now, you know what they'd done? Carefully washed and starched and ironed the money to make it look like new. Just like some of these... Wait a minute, Lou. What's the matter, Johnny? Just hold everything a minute. Huh? Just hold up on that receipt for this stuff, will you? Why? What's the matter with it? 
Where'll I find this Jeremy Withers? You got his address? Well, sure. Let me have it. Well, sure, Johnny. Well, what's the matter? Just let me have his address. <laughs> Expense account item two, a dime for a phone call to police headquarters where I got some very interesting information and, incidentally, gave none in return. Item three, another dollar twenty for a cab back to my apartment. Item four, three ninety-seven to fill up the gas tank in my car. It was getting dark now, but I headed west on 44, then north on 202. A few miles short of Granby, I found the dirt road I was looking for leading off to the left. Then, finally, the crossroads known as Millbury Corners, consisting of one general store, a grocery, and a filling station, where I stopped only long enough to get some local directions. The Jeremy Withers place turned out to be a tiny, square, unpainted, clabbered building that sat forlornly in the middle of a small, seedy-looking, weed-grown lot. But there was a flickering light inside. I could see it even through the tightly drawn shades. No doubt an oil lamp. And when I knocked on the door... Who is it? Who is it? Well, my name is Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Dollar? That's right, from the insurance company. Open up, Mr. Withers. Uh, just to leave me open up the peephole I put on this here door, so as I can take a look at you first. Go ahead. Dollar, eh? Here, uh, take a look at these, my credentials, if you can see them in the moonlight. Dollar, eh? Come on, Withers, open up, hmm? Just, just leave me get these here now chains undid. And this bolt now. Come on, Withers, you're stalling. All right, now. Just you stay outside there and tell me what the trouble is, young fella. It's about that insurance premium of yours. What's the matter with you, boy? I sent it all in yesterday. I'll say you did. In hard cash, too. Just like always. Good hard cash. Good, huh? So what are you talking about? I'm talking about some of the twenties that were mixed in with that stack of bills. Some of the nice new ones. Like this one, for instance. What's the matter with it? Are you kidding? Plenty. Uh, just a minute, young fellow. Just tell me one thing, Mr. Withers. Where did you get this money? The time has come for a friendly warning. Now that the 4th of July is almost here, better keep plenty of 7-Up chilled and ready to serve. This is the sparkling drink that says a nice warm welcome to everyone who comes calling on the 4th. 7-Up has a wonderful gay sparkle and a fresh as all out of doors taste. Just about everybody goes for fresh, clean tasting 7-Up. Grandmothers, moms and dads, the teenage set, even the tiny tots. It's this same clean, fresh taste that makes 7-Up just great with food, too. 7-Up wakes up your taste buds, makes whatever you're eating taste even better. Believe me, any food's a feast with 7-Up. So if you're in the business of pleasing people, and who isn't, keep plenty of 7-Up on hand for family and friends. Better order a case today. For a fresh, clean taste on the 4th of July, fresh up with 7-Up. Now, you look at here, boy. What's the matter with that money I sent in? I said, where did you get it, Mr. Withers? I'm talking about these brand new $20 bills. Anything wrong with it? The way you're talking, you might think it was counterfeit or something. Counterfeit? Hardly. No, of course not. But it's plenty hot, believe me. Now, what do you mean by that? Are you trying to tell me you don't know? How should I know? Well, why do you lock yourself in the way you do? Not only a lock on the door, but safety chains and a bolt. Man's got a right to protect himself, ain't he? Against what? Well, maybe maybe against nosy people like you. Now, what's the matter with that money? You going to tell me or ain't you? Sure, I'll tell you. These new bills are part of the loot from the First National Bank over in Millville. Loot? That's right, stolen money. Over $20,000, mostly in new 20s. No. I worked on the case. I had to memorize a list of serial numbers, or rather number groups, as long as your arm. You must have a good memory, boy. Luckily, the numbers were consecutive, all starting with triple six, double four, so it wasn't too much of a strain. Well, you mean you didn't solve the case? I didn't get to first base. But you didn't answer my question. Where did you get these? Just 
part of the money ahead. Mr. Withers, where do you get your income? Well? From a pension, that's what. Pension? Anything wrong with that? Big enough to afford an annual insurance premium of over $2,300? So for two, three years, I've been able to pay it okay. It doesn't make any sense, Withers, and you know it. Now look, son, I worked hard all my life. Made a right steady income. And I saved up a little bit to put aside. Mr. Withers. I never did like to waste what I had on fancy living and such like. So after my wife died and our kid went off and got herself married, well, I just kept on putting it aside. Mm -hmm. And these here last couple of years, too, I've been buying up some insurance so my daughter, she can benefit when I die. Now, anything wrong with that? What sort of work did you do? Flagman for the railroad company, that's what. Flagman on a railroad crossing. A flagman? And you say that paid enough to save enough to buy the kind of policy you hold? I told you... Sure, I... sure. Some of that money you sent the company was all right. Maybe it did come out of your pension money or whatever you managed to save. But the rest, these brand new $20 bills... Now, you better tell me about it, Mr. Withers, or... Uh, would you rather tell it to a judge? Well, hmm? well all right, mister. Miss, Mr. Dollar, did you say it is? That's right, Johnny Dollar. Uh, well, maybe I had better tell you where some of the money come from. I think you better. Well, you see, I had a son, too. A stepson. His name was Bernard. Wait a minute. Barney with us? You know him? Barney the bum. That punk and small-time bank robber who was finally killed trying to crack security first over in Danbury. Yes, sir. That was right after the job in Millville and two or three others before that. Yes, sir. Keep talking, Mr. Withers. Well, now, maybe it's a pretty bad thing for me to say, him being my wife's kid and all, but, mister, that Bernard was no good. That's an understatement. Whatever happened to him, I mean, his being killed, that's all he deserved. No good bank robber. Go on. Well, it was my knowing about him, that's what kept me from ever putting what I had in any bank. Instead, I sort of kept it right close, where I could watch over it. Where? Yeah, sure, I'll tell you. Right under the floor, over there in the corner. You better show it to me, Mr. Withers. I'd like a look at the rest of your money. Well, it's all gone now. Gone? I mean, all used up. The money of my own, I mean. That's why I had to start using up some of that that Bernard hid away. What's the matter with you, anyway? First, you tell me Barney was no good because of the jobs he pulled. You say that he deserved to die for what he did. Yes, sir, But I you don't hesitate to keep and use the money that he stole. Well, no, I didn't steal it, did I? Well, do you think that makes you any less guilty for keeping it and spending it? Well, sure. Instead of returning it to the banks that it was stolen from? And why didn't you turn Barney in when you found out what he was doing? You say you had no use for him. Well, I, I've been looking out for myself, is all. Man's got to look out for himself, don't he? Well, from now on, the state's going to be looking out for you. You mean you're going to get me arrested and put in jail? Well, you don't think I'm going to let you get off scot-free? Well, it ain't as though Bernard done them jobs alone by himself, is it? What difference does that make? Well, it was that partner here has killed the bank guard over in Millville. Never caught him, though. That has nothing whatever to do with this money that... Wait a minute. Do you know who that partner was? Who oh, I know. Why else you suppose I keep myself locked in here this way? And why I took out some life insurance? Who was he? Oh, that rotten, crooked Jerry McNear, that's who. And you didn't tell the authorities? Why should I? If I had, they might have tried to make me tell them where Bernard hid the money at. The same as that McNear's been trying. Oh, only I kept telling him I don't know. Mr. Withers... Don't you see? There's tears the police and all think McNear got all the money. And I'll tell you this, Mr. Dollar. Yes, tell me. Only thing that's kept that McNear from killing me off for not telling him is that then he'd never find out where Bernard hid out that money. Well, you better tell me, Mr. Withers, and fast. Yeah. Well, now, if I tell you where it's at, so as you can take it back, you think maybe the police, they'd go a little, a little easier on me? Well, isn't that pretty up? Wait a minute, what's that? A little shutter out there on the kitchen window. Must be... Now, listen, if you're sure it'll make it any easier on me... If all or most of that money can be returned on the basis of your information, well, of course it will. All right, then. You, uh, you know the old hacker farm about two miles up the road? No, but go on. Well, that's where the big poplar trees and the broken-down windmill is. Mm -hmm. A lot of broken windows in the house. Place is empty. Go on. That's counted kind of nobody been living in it maybe for, oh, 10, 15 years now. Except in Bernard when he was hiding. And the money is somewhere in that house? Well? Carla? Yes? 
You sure you'll try and have them go easy on to me if I tell you where that money's hid? The only thing I'm sure of is if you don't tell me, I'll turn you over to the authorities and tell them to show you no mercy at all. All right, all right. All right, I'll tell you. Go ahead. Well, now, at the back of that old house, there's an old well. Only it ain't been used for years, and it's near empty now. Yes? You let yourself down by the rope on the windlass, maybe, oh, seven, eight foot. And there's a sort of big shelf hollowed out. And that's where it is? The money's right there on that shelf. Hey. Okay, Pop, thanks. Jerry! Expecting somebody else, Pop? That's a corny line, McNear. Keep out of this. Ready, Pop? No, Jerry. No, no, listen, Jerry. Put it down. Put that thing down. And now you, Take it easy, McNair. Don't move. Listen to me. No, keep away from that lamp. Yeah. 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 Easy as one, two, three. You've made iced tea, and oh, what a beautiful flavor. Oh, what a beautiful flavor in new instant tender leaf tea. Just take a spoonful of instant tender leaf. One. Add cold tap water. Two. Load it with ice. Three. You've made iced tea. New Instant Tender Leaf is 100% pure tea. Richer, brighter, livelier tea. It's made right from the juices of ripe young tea leaves. Instant Tender Leaf brand. Make a pitcher full. Easy as one, two, three. You've made iced tea, and oh, what a beautiful flavor in New Instant Tender Leaf tea. brief second it took him to shoot down the old man, I suddenly realized that I'd come along without my gun. In spite of smashing the old-fashioned oil lamp, the only light in the place, his first shot put a nice new part in my hair. As I rolled under the table, the other two shots missed me, although he must have been able to see me in the light from the fire I'd started. He stood there looking down at me at the blood running from the crease in my hair. But then, instead of shooting again, he turned away from the now roaring fire, went out the door, and took off in a car. I got thoroughly singed, dragging myself and the body of Mr. Withers outside, then jumped into my car and headed up the dirt road, hoping I could find the Hacker Farm some two miles away, the one with the tall poplars, the broken windmill, the windowless house, yes, and the loot from the bank robberies. Ahead of me were the tail lights of McNear's car. The moon was full. I could see pretty well, so I cut off my own lights. After only a mile or so, he turned off to a farm that had a broken windmill all right, but there were lights in the windows of the house. Good. He was going to the wrong place. Or else the old man had told me wrong. With my headlights on again, I finally found it. The old hacker farm. The remains of a mailbox still bore the name on it. After a quick look to make sure I wasn't being followed, I drove in the yard and parked the car behind a clump of bushes. Then walked around the old well. With only the moonlight to go by, I lowered the bucket, snagged the rope over the handle of the windlass, and slowly went down, hand over hand, into the well, feeling with my feet around the circular brick wall for the shelf that Withers had described. It was a big square hole in the side of that wall, big enough for me to crouch in and to find, with the help of a match, the two battered, moldy old suitcases loaded with money mostly tens and twenties, literally hundreds of them. No wonder McNear had been willing to kill once he'd found out where it was hidden. But as I knelt there, wondering about the best way to load the stuff in the bucket that was now swinging down near the water at the bottom of the well. Pretty stupid, Dollar. What? Got yourself into a trap, didn't you? Did I, McNear? You think I didn't know it was you coming down the road after me before you turned off your lights? So you knew. That's why I turned off at that other place, to make you think I was stopping there. So you fell for it, huh? <laughs> fell for that old gag. Pretty smart, aren't you, McNair? That's right. That's why I stay alive. But you're not smart, Dollar. 
And that's why you're going to end up in the bottom of this well feeling real dead. Kind of, I'm the guy that's got the gun. So as soon as I get a match going... What makes you think I haven't got a gun? And didn't try to use it while I was knocking over the old man? And you think I didn't know you were still alive back As he there talked, in his place? I crouched there, if out of his I sight. He pulled off my jacket. I draped it over one of the suitcases, the set my hat on one corner of it, well as then shoved it out just far enough for him to see it if he struck What's another match, in the hope he'd think it was me. Now, me then I waited. Yeah. yeah, I got plenty of light now. And you think I can't see your head and shoulders sticking out of that hole? You make a real nice target, Dollar, even with only a match to see you. All right, then. I'll climb on back up the rope. Oh, no, you won't. What are you talking about? I'm going to shoot you right there in the well. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me. It's no use, Dollar. I found the money. I'll make a deal with you. I'll split 50-50. You make a deal? <laughs> You're trying to stall, that's all. Not near. Shut up. i got to be sure of my aim before this match goes out. Listen to me, will you? So long, Dollar. <laughs> Just as easy as that. <laughs> now, now all I, all I got to do is get down there and pick up all that nice new money. Oh, oh! You got to be careful. Got nothing to hurry about. Not now. Well, come on, you <laughs> better find that shelf. Right here. Huh? Dollar. I, I heard you drop in the water. You heard that suitcase with my coat on it. Let go. Let go of me. Oh, you let go of that rope. This time I'll kill you. Try this, McNear. I'll kill you. With only one hand? Try this. No! All he could do when he'd recovered from the shock of his fall was stand there in the water at the bottom of the well, knee-deep in the money from the suitcase I'd thrown down there, cursing me as I climbed out and pulled the bucket out of his reach. He was still there when I brought back a couple of the state police. Expense account total? Why bother with it when I'll collect such a nice commission on the loot I recovered? Not bad, you know? I mean, for one night's work? Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. menthol cigarette has tobacco flavor a man can get hold of. Alpine always tastes rich, never smokes rough. Alpine filter cigarettes. Nice. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, one of the most valuable violins in the world that inspires a man to murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Parker Fennelly as Mr. Withers, Leon Janney as McNear, and Alan Manson as Lou Little. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hannah speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.